नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वट आर दिमिलैरिटीज एंड डिसिमिलैरिटीज बिटवीन डोमेस्टिक ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट एंड इंटरनेशनल ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट ओके सो वेन आर कंपनी इज ट्राइंग टू गो गो ग्लोबल फ्रॉम डोमेस्टिक टू टू इंटरनेशनल primarily the differences are, are occurring because it's a different country and because it's a different country so a different country brings uh, sub differences which are because of economic systems which are because of legal systems which are because of political systems also cultural differences okay so uh, so based on these parameters broadly the similarities and differences can be divided into physical factors social factors and competitive landscape factors So what are physical factors? Physical factors are uh, your geography or your demography. Right? What are the social factors? Social factors can be political or law of that country, legal, then uh, cultural or economical. similarly uh, similarly there are also differences because of competitive landscape and to understand those differences or similarities we have to look at our suppliers you have to look at our customers you have to look at the rival firms so based on these parameters based on these parameters based on these factors we can develop our answer next one explain the various strategic issues which are involved in international operations management okay so guys some of the considerations which are there in international management are the first one and the most important is what is your strategic orientation so what is the meaning of strategic orientation so primarily we consider two factors one that if we are going in a different country then how do we adapt to local responsiveness and the second factor is what is pressure of cost reduction or you can say to make it more efficient so your local responsiveness can be uh, low it can be high similarly your cost reduction pressures can be low and it can be high okay so if you are having a strategy in which if you are having a strategy in which both local resp uh, responsiveness and cost pressures are low then it is international strategy if local responsiveness is high but cost reduction pressures are low it is multi domestic if a local responsiveness uh, local responsiveness is low but pressures of cost reduction and being more efficient are high it will be global strategy and if both of them are high then it is transnational strategy of course because you are writing civil services exam so if you want to gain marks you should always write with examples for uh, for uh, for example what is, what is what can be example of uh, international strategy so maybe uh, harley davidson bike davidson bike so guys when uh, these harley davidson guys they go in a different country neither they make significant change in the price of the product not in the product itself they don't customize the product the same bike is sold universally on the other hand if you will see netflix although price is relatively same in all the countries but the product in india is totally different from the product in uh, uh, another country uh, let us look at uh, another strategy of global where the 
pressure of reducing cost is very high and one example can be your MS Office by Microsoft. So the price of MS Office license in India is much much less than the price at which, at which it is sold in US. But the product is same. There is no customization which has been done in MS Office for India. If both are changed then uh, it is transnational and example can be McDonald. Okay. Uh, now guys, this strategic orientation was the first strategic issue which is involved in it. Now there can be a couple of more issues as well. Another one is how do you manage, how do you manage your supply chain? So you have to get located your uh, uh, production units at those places where uh, you are uh, the cost of resources is very low of course uh, without compromising the uh, without compromising the quality so another associated decision is your manufacturing so how do you want to plan your manufacturing whether it is centralized or whether it is decentralized in multiple countries another decision related to this is whether you want to do make or buy or you want to outsource so this is second thing uh, another strategic issue which is there especially for operations management is your uh, quality management see guys uh, drugs which are produced sold and uh, consumed in india sometimes they are not accepted in usa because fda has got different quality standards for those drugs so uh, you also need to sometimes you also need to vary the quality of the product as you go from one country to uh, another country then there can be other considerations as well uh, uh, one is your uh, of course your cross cultural management of course it is more of uh, hr manage hr manager issue than operation management issue operations management uh, issue but again there's a lot of impact in your uh, a production units of this cross-cultural management as well. In fact, this is a very important point. International business may kabhi bhi differences ki baat aati hai, cross-cultural ka point likhna hi likhna hai tum logo ko. Then another consideration can be your ethical issues. Because you are doing a lot of outsourcing and suppose you, you have outsourced to a company in China and uh, maybe that company is not ethical they are exploiting the labor low cost labor so it also becomes a ethical issues from operations manager point of view and the last thing is of course you also have to do a lot of considerations around uh, exchange foreign exchange rate management so these are some of the issues which are involved in international operations management next one describe the various issues which are involved in global organizational design next question describe the various issues which are involved in global organizational design so we have to find out those issues which factor the design or structure of organization when we go global so first thing first whenever you think of design or structure there is a very famous quote which you can use by Alfred Chandler so this this gentleman said what structure follows strategy so whatever is your business strategy that will derive what structure of the organization or design of organization will be so this strategy will do what this strategy will tell you what is your style of your decision making what is your style of communication? What is your style of coordination and control? And based on these parameters, the structure or design of the organization will be evolved. Now this entire design can be broadly divided into two parts. One is vertical differentiation. And the second one is horizontal differentiation. 
so let me tell you what vertical differentiation is so vertical so vertical differentiation is what how much you are going to centralize or decentralized decision making how much you are going to centralize or decentralize authority of decision making this is your vertical differentiation of course for example if it, if if it is a globally integrated company you will do more centralized uh planning on the on the other hand if it is a company which follows local responsiveness then you need to have a decentralized uh, structure or decentralized design okay so let me go to next slide to tell you what do we have to do under horizontal differentiation so guys when you think of horizontal differentiation what should come to your mind first there are three steps to this story step number 1 is that first we identify which tasks are to be done in the organization second step is we divide these tasks we divide these tasks into what into your sbus or your departments or your maybe subsidiary companies or in your teams at or to the level of even individuals so once i have allocated my task the third step is i have to find the relationship between different individuals so i have to find superior subordinate relationships between these individuals okay so once i have done that once i have i have done that based on this i can divide my horizontal differentiation into various categories one i can do it maybe activity based i can do it maybe uh, product based i can also do it maybe geography based i can also do maybe combinations of 1 2 3 which i have told earlier and then there are some new kind of designs as well which are neo classical design so if it is activity based if it is activity based then it is known as functional functional structure if it's a product based if it's a product based it is known as divisional structure if it's a geography it is area based structure some books will tell you product and geography together to be divisional otherwise you can say geography separately it's a area based if it's a combination so it is a you can say matrix based sometime it is also known as mixed structure and there are uh, neo classical new type of designs like your network organization or your you can say virtual organization but again you, we are writing this uh, this paper for upsc civil services so to get good marks definitely you should include examples so what is meaning of functional that you that you divide your organization in different functions for example productions financial management marketing management hrm and so on this is functional qualification what is the divisional so it is based on products for example infosys has its sbus based on different divisions so there is a, so there is a separate sbu which does projects only for retail customers then there is another which does it for banking customer known as bf 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 si then there is another which does it for insurance only then there is one which does only for product engineering uh, uh, product engineering uh, customers for uh, i mean product engineering work is done for those customers similarly geography based again infosys only it has got different uh, geography based uh, differentiation so there is a sbu with which does project uh, which does uh, projects only for us clients then there is another one which does it for only european clients then there is another one which does it for apex clients similarly matrix based is nothing but a combination of some of some of them which has been described like 1 2 3 
so matrix is mix of one two or three whatever now this new classical design or what these are like boundary less designs like these are new age designs because of availability of communication technology your ERPs your emails and all all these things so they are lesser and lesser horizontal and vertical boundaries and these are new age designs which are network and virtual designs next one why are mergers and acquisitions are gaining popularity among Indian corporates so first of all you have to appreciate the question you should write in such a way that that examiner ko pata lage ha you agree with the statement not academically but you actually know what is happening in the industry what is happening in the indian ecosystem these days so wo, how can you tell that to examiner by giving you by giving the suitable examples so all the examiner ne kya pucha hai ki kyo, why this is happening why this is happening that merger and acquisitions are gaining uh, gaining popularity in the indian corporates but we'll give those reasons but हम साथ में उसी के साथ हम एक एक करके हम अपना एग्जांपल भी लिखते जाएंगे सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद फर्स्ट रीजन सो द फर्स्ट रीजन इज दैट दीस मर्जर्स एंड एक्विजिशन एक्विजिशन आर हैपनिंग बिकॉज़ बिकॉज़ व्हाट बिकॉज़ फॉर द रीजन ऑफ ऑब्टेनिंग लार्जर मार्केट शेयर लार्जर मार्केट शेयर नाउ वन एग्जांपल ऑफ दिस कैन बी रिसेंटली देयर हैज बीन मर्जर बिटवीन जी एंड Sony and it has created one of the very large media companies. Couple of years back, it was Vodafone plus Idea. Second reason. Second reason why they are happening in India latest in latest days that people want to enter into Indian market. Enter into Indian market. So, what can be example of uh, example of this one? When Walmart, when Walmart acquired Flipkart, when Walmart acquired Flipkart. Third one. Uh, sometimes companies are acquiring other companies because they want to enter into a unrelated or a new ways tech business. So, they want to enter into uh, new or tech business for example flipkart wanted to flipkart wanted to enter into digital payments so flipkart acquired phone pay then uh, sometimes companies are acquired because you want to you, you want to change you want to change your or you want to diversify your service offerings so what does this mean so baiju was own baiju uh, baiju was all online teaching company but they acquired akash why because they wanted to uh, because they wanted to do service delivery through in offline model as well we can have more reasons why people are entering into different companies uh sometimes uh sometimes they want to offer new products and we'll take baiju only so when baiju acquired uh baiju acquired what great learning great learning company so why did they do that because they wanted to enter into professional courses let's take one more and uh, it's very interesting sometimes you acquire company just to kill the competition just to kill the competition and i'll give you interesting example so around year 2013-14 ola acquired a company named taxi for sure so basically it was competing taxi for sure was equally competing with ola so they just bought it for around 1200 crores and they did nothing with that they just they just uh, discarded it uh, i mean they didn't use any resource of taxi for sure nothing so they so they bought this company just because they didn't want somebody else to grow and uh, therefore they just want to kill the competition so ola acquired taxi uh, taxi uh, taxi for sure so why these are some of the reasons why merger and acquisitions are uh, mergers and acquisitions are gain, gaining popularity among indian corporates of course of course a fundamental reason is that a fundamental reason is that like indian economy is growing well indian economy is growing well 
and because economy is growing well people want to take share of that and uh, so what merger and acquisition, acquisition give you it gives you inorganic growth inorganic growth so rather than growing organically it gives you inorganic growth and you grow faster next one is it possible to take over a target company okay in a hostile manner justify your answer okay so guys you have to understand the process of uh, uh, acquiring a company in a hostile manner which is also known as hostile takeover so let me uh, make you understand that with the help of one example and you'll find it to be very interesting so let us assume that let us assume that there is a company so let us take example of phone pay so what phone pay does phone pay wants to acquire paytm phone pay wants to acquire paytm so how it can be done in a hostile manner so let us understand its steps and that is how we will substantiate yes it can be done in a hostile manner although it is difficult but yes it can be done so let us understand the process of acquiring so guys first step so what will happen in the first step in the first step management of phone pay will go to management of paytm and they will tell them we want to acquire we we, we, we want to acquire your company okay so i mean typically what will happen uh, the ceo or cfo phone pay so who is ceo phone pay mr samir nigam probably he will go and he will meet uh, vijay shekhar sharma and he will tell you we want to acquire you so if uh, vijay shekhar sharma vss agrees if he agrees then what will happen both of them will they will decide on some price which will be at a premium than market price both of them will go back to their respective boards they will get uh, they will get the uh, consent of the board and they will come back and yes it is done and this if it is done this way then it is known as friendly takeover friendly takeover okay now suppose suppose guys what happen vijay shekhar sharma says no i am not ready even though uh, mr sagit mr samir nigam uh, uh, tells him that your fundamentals are weak anyway you are not going to survive in front of us but still uh, uh, in his in his own uh, thinking mr vijay shekhar sharma thinks that no uh, hum log nahi bikenge so what he does he says a no okay if he says a no then what uh, mr samir nigam or what phone pay can do phone pay can quietly starts quietly starts buying quietly starts buying share of paytm in the open market so they will quietly starts buying op, uh, shares in the open market and if phone pay is doing this this is known as street sweep okay so phone pay will start buying shares so they will reach some level like 2% 5% 10% but then phone pay cannot keep doing it why because regulator will come in picture so sebi will come in picture and there is a sebi takeover code 2011 and it has got a limit that if you acquire share of a, if you buy share of a particular company through the open market beyond a percentage point like 25 plus 5% and so on if you take beyond a certain market then you have to publicly disclose publicly disclose so let us take some hypothetical number that phone pay has acquired phone pay has taken from the open market maybe 13% shares quietly and now that upper limit comes okay so next what phone pay will do next phone pay will now next what phone pay will do next phone pay will release because now phone pay has to announce okay now phone pay has to uh, now phone pay has to announce this street sweep is what that without information of board of paytm and without information of uh, um, shareholders of paytm still they are buying quietly this is street sweep okay but now this matter or this news will be public yes phone pay is trying to uh, acquire paytm okay so now what phone pay can do now what phone pay can do phone pay can do two things number one they will give a public offer to shareholders again mind it guys again phone pay is not going to office of paytm they are doing it openly only now 
in the so they, so they are directly getting in touch with shareholders by bypassing by bypassing the both management and board okay so they will give a public offer that if current price of share is 610 i'll buy for 650 rupees and then uh, but i'll buy only for a certain limit maybe if 10 percent of uh, shareholders are ready uh, to sell their shares so this thing is known as tender offer this thing is known known as tender offer another thing which phone pay could have done is that they would have asked some of the existing shareholders which are major shareholders to vote against the board and then uh, uh, got approval of the merger if this would have been the case then it is known as proxy fight so proxy fight is proxy fight is what that this uh, uh, what phone pay does phone pay contacts major shareholders of paytm and then they ask them and they convince them to uh, vote against the current board and to get approval for them to get approval for them for the for the merger this is known as proxy fight now let us suppose this uh, prox uh, this uh, tender offer works and now sh and uh, uh, phone pay has now 13 plus 10 23 percent shares of ATM okay cool what is the next step and if 23 percent is that number at which phone pay will be able to control the board of paytm or uh, get them the decision making in its own favor in the board of paytm so then what will happen now people of phone pay are in board of paytm so now they will anyway because they are inside the board they will get this uh, approval of this acquisition or approval of this merger and that stage is known as as the name says cleanup merger this is known as cleanup merger so guys this is so these are the stages through which one by one a hostile uh, takeover of our company can take place but mind it mind it guys hostile takeover is difficult process because uh, the target company can also employ a couple of tactics to resist the takeover and there are list of them like poison pill golden parachute white knight white square and so many of them so there are a couple of things which paytm can also do in that case but because you are writing answer for civil services exam if you want to get good marks of course you have to come up with nice examples so the best example is what tesla ceo mr Elon musk is doing with twitter so what he did so Mr. Elon Musk quietly bought 9% shares of Twitter in early 2022 and then offered and then gave a tender offer that I'll buy remaining 43% shares for a price of, uh, no sorry, remaining 91% shares for a price of 43 billion rupees. So, but then, uh, Twitter is also planning to use the tactic of poison pill which is nothing but shareholder uh, rights agreement and uh, of, which is nothing but offering share to existing shareholders at a reduced price uh, other than bidder other than uh, the company which is trying to uh, bid for the target company and uh, this is trying to do that another another example from an Indian context can be that a uh, couple of years back LNT tried to acquire mind tree through hostile takeover so to answer the question uh, is it possible to take over a company in a hostile manner yes it can be done and this is how it can be done but of course it is a difficult process it is a long process and the target company also has a lot of tactics through which it can disrupt the plan of acquirer company next one despite the comprehensive strategic planning many merger and acquisition do not yield the desired results discuss the possible reasons for the same citing 
suitable example so guys most of merger and acquisition they do not uh, give that uh, uh, that synergy for which they are done so why why merger and acquisition acquisitions are done because uh, some synergy is expected for example if value of company a is 500 crore value of company b is 100 crore but if we do a merger then value of both companies a plus b is not 600 but 700 crores because there is 100 crores synergy effort which comes in picture okay this is the reason why merger and acquisition do take place now but still most of them fail so what can be reason of some of the failures of uh, merger and acquisition the uh, the first one is incorrect valuation of target company so why incorrect valuation can happen that you were expecting that the valuation of company b is 100 uh, crores but actual valuation is maybe 60 crore only and therefore you don't get those result desired uh, results another reason why incorrect valuation can happen so there is a effect which is known as hubris effect so what is hubris hubris effect the managers of acquire company think that they are very smart they are under over confidence and they think that they are thinking right and in that and in, in that thinking only they will keep acquiring company without uh, even if company has no value of being acquired this known as hubris hypothesis hubris hypothesis so incorrect valuation is the first reason why merger and acquisition mergers and acquisitions fail the second reason is integration issues so what are integration issues so integrations can be on technological level two companies have got different erps how integration will take how communication will take place and so on so there are some technological issues which uh, which can disrupt uh, everything there can also be uh, differences of processes the way business is done between two companies so this so, so this will create integration issues third reason why sometimes they fail is because of agency problem so what is agency problem so sometimes what happen that manager of acquire company manager of acquire company they undertake merger even if the value is not there why because the manager Uh, will feel more happier if they are managing larger companies uh, first is first it is a matter of pride second they will get more money more compensation because it's a larger company so even though it is not good for shareholders still management will go ahead with the with the acquisition and because of these the challenges because of agency problem also sometimes merger and acquisition do fail another reason can be that there has been insufficient due diligence insufficient due 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 diligence that your entire synergy that has been overestimated it's very closely related to incorrect incorrect valuation only another reason can be cultural issues and of course this this looks simple but cultural issues play a major role when two companies are being acquired because culturally the way companies are being managed is totally different the way reliance is being managed is, is totally different from the way infosys is being managed so if some integration happens at some level of course there will be a lot of challenges in the way people are working in those companies and this also becomes a major reason of failure of companies another reason can be that there is a lack of strategic plan lack of strategic plan or commitment of management and so on so that can also be one reason why uh, desired results are not obtained but we also have to give we also have to give some examples to get good marks in the exam so uh, we can take one example of ebay so ebay did what ebay acquired skype why ebay did that so what ebay is doing ebay is just like our flipkart only so what ebay thought that let us acquire skype why because using the skype the customers will be able to uh, chat through video conferencing they'll be able to buy products and have that kind of communication but that was not needed so ebay acquisition of skype failed in fact after couple of years ebay had to 
uh, sell of Skype. So they didn't even retain it. Okay. Another example can be our uh, Microsoft acquired Nokia. Again failed. Another example is Google acquired Motorola. So why Google did that? Google thought I have Android, Motorola was a handset manufacturer. So Google thought I'll have good synergy and I'll go ahead with that plan and again failed. Even the largest merger till date guys, largest merger till date which was between two companies. One was Vodafone and another company was M-A-N-N-E-S Man A-G. So this was the biggest acquisition which has happened till date. Uh, I think 180 billion or something. Even this has also failed. Next question. Now let us read the question. The past decades have witnessed a number of scandals and shareholder disputes, all of which indicate lacunae not lapses in governance. In the light of this statement, discuss the role of Indian corporate governance framework in responding to these challenges. All right, this is an eight marker question. And then next step, understanding the keywords. This is number of scandals, shareholder disputes, lacune if not lapses, and finally the Indian corporate framework governance, how it has responded to such. So while introducing your answer, you can name some of the scandals, all right, because the scandal term has been given here, you can name, uh, and first of all, let us understand how you have to approach while writing this answer, what kind of approach you should have. First of all, you will be uh, stating the issues which have been involved with the corporate governance framework, and then moving on, like how the Indian corporate governance framework has evolved to settle those issues or disputes and to address those issues. All right, so uh, let us understand, let us start with uh, the writing of the answer. How? By naming some of the scandals. For example, a number of scandals, you can have a lot of names you are at your tips, like by writing this under scandals, such as Satyam scandal, Satyam case, which actually led to the need of, actual need of corporate governance framework in India. Satyam. Uh, then we can quote the example of ICICI Bank, all right. Then uh, this uh, Jet, Air, uh, Jet Airways, Kingfisher Airlines. We can actually explain that there are various kind of scandals which have happened in past. Uh, for example, PNB case also the recent one, the need of Modi one. So we can state that there are a number of scandals which has actually led to the need of the Indian corporate governance framework to actually work and evolve and become more efficient. Now, you will uh, state some of the issues which are actually there in the corporate governance framework issues. Issues such as, one, first of all, there is discrepancy. Dependencies in the selection of board members. Why? Because there are, most of the time, the board members uh, are selected on, not on the merit basis, obviously. And uh, there is, uh, there are uh, cases where the promoters have actually influenced the selection processes for the board members. And one more thing that these board members, when they have been, you know, uh, appointed to the board on the recommendation of some of the previous board members such that they are actually not efficient also. So these are the kind of discrepancies which actually have been uh, seen in the selection of process of the board members. Next issue can be, uh, you can write uh, about the no true independence to the directors. Now, there has been no true independence given to the directors in this issue. The independence of the directors have been a major issue that has actually supposed to be the biggest reform uh, by the Kumar Mangalam uh, committee in 1999. So what is the case? Why is this a problem? See, there are various cases which have been seen in the past where the decision of the independent director have been actually influenced by the promoters 
or their decision have been completely rejected by the promoters in this case all right so uh, independent directors actually whenever they try to protest uh, to the uh, various decisions of the uh, promoters or the founders they have either been suspended or they have been uh, rejected or they have been clearly you know asked to leave the organization in that manner so there is no true independence to the directors you see with each issue you can cite various examples like in this case you can cite the example of uh, 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 cyrus mistry case all right uh, the tata case so let us understand our next point of issue that can be uh, when very you know recent and uh, very talk about issue is excessive executive compensation now what is this see the compensation actually has to be and have to be very competitive to uh, attract the talent here so now what the compensation actually given is uh, is not actually based on the performance so even if the board is not performing well or the directors or the executives are performing under their uh, you know level even if they are doing that they are paid in huge amounts so the data actually has showed that there are companies who are not performing well and still the remuneration of the executives are still touching skies there also there is a gap between the salary of the top executives and the other employees of the organization so this is also a very important issue in the field of corporate governance next is the control is there in the hands of the founder most of the times see uh, here we can state the example of icici bank where chanda kochar actually did what he uh, a quid pro quo uh, transaction was actually happened in that case she uh, gave loan to the video con company which in return gave that particular amount or uh, maybe the on a matlab some less amount to the company which was of chanda kochar's husband so this was actually a quid pro quo transaction case here the personal interest of the founder has been put over the interest of the shareholders so this is basically the control actually is always there in the hands of the founders and the case of cyrus mistry also you can uh, you know cite in this case where the tata uh, where the directors of the car he was actually the cyrus mistry was actually the director of the tata since 2005 and what happened was the major share holding was there with the tata uh, family members only and it has also happened that in one such case cyrus was ousted out of a meeting where the other members or the co-founders they did not approve of his particular decisions so these are the various kind of cases you can cite in such issues now the next one is uh, you can actually cite five or six kind of uh, you know uh, issues there uh, focusing on the number or uh, uh, of the marks of which the question is actually now the lack of transparency is also an issue transparency uh, in reporting reporting between the auditors and the managers this is satyam computers case you can easily cite there where there was misappropriation of actually the accounts fraud and finally sebi had to step in in that case so these are basically the issues which are there in the corporate governance framework now we should actually write the next step should be and uh, explaining the framework of the indian corporate governance in this case so what is the framework you can actually write some of uh, the committee's names here starting your uh, you know uh, building up, in building up your uh, answer you can cite the various names of the committees which have been related to the corporate governance framework such as kumar mangalam committee all right uh, another one is the naresh chandra committee another one you can cite about narayan murthy committee so these were all the committees which actually recommended for various reforms that should be uh, you know introduced in the companies laws or the sebi act etc etc so that the corporate governance framework can be enriched you can next up cite uh, the name of the sebi clause 49 
of the listing agreement which now has been shifted to the LODR which is uh, the listing obligations and disclosure requirement regulations basically this has been shifted to this in this clause various uh, things have been mentioned various provisions have been made such as the it has specified the minimum number of independent directors that should be appointed all right uh, there should be an institution of audit. It talks about institution of audit. There should be uh, there should be some shareholders grievance redressal commission and annual corporation gov annual corporation government report also has to be uh, you know uh, issued or published every year. So such kind of examples you can give about uh, uh, you know the clause 49 which is uh, actually helping the corporate governance framework in India to actually work on the ground level. Now next up you can uh, 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 write about the provision, certain provisions of the companies are relating to the corporate governance framework. Companies Act of uh, 2013 here uh, for example it is it is provided that independent directors have been given for example in any listed company one third of the total strength of directors should be the independent directors and uh, also one uh, at least one uh, uh, woman director should be there on the board it is being made vanity Companies Act also provides for the nomination and remuneration commission, which would actually address the excessive executive comp uh, compensation issue and the you know weak boards issue here. And uh, another is uh, the it talks about the internal audit mechanism should be there. So these are various kind of uh, provisions that you can actually cite in your example. Uh, sorry, the answer your answer so that the question becomes enriching in the form of how Indian uh, corporate governance framework is working uh, to address the issues which have been faced in the past. One very important thing you can cite here is like the SEBI's uh, and there is this committee, SEBI's committee was there on corporate governance. It was made in 2017. Here, the uh, various things which have been mentioned are that the role of the MD and the chairman should be separated so that there is no mix of conflict of interest that happens. Minimum board strength that should be increased to six members with at least one women member. All right. So such kind of uh, examples or sorry, the yeah. Such kind of uh, name of various committees and companies act or the SEBI clause you can give and uh, the various provisions you can cite regarding the framework of the companies act. And finally, you can conclude your answer by stating a little bit of way forward, like how the Indian corporate governance uh, can actually, uh, you know, improve itself again further so that such kind of scams can be reduced to the minimum possible level. All right. So this is basically our question regarding the corporate governance reforms uh, framework. Now let us understand the next question. It is, while the public distribution system forms a cornerstone of uh, government food and nutrition policy, India continues to be home to a large population of hungry and malnourished people. Critically analyze this statement by focusing on the functioning and efficiency of the PDS in achieving food and nutrition security in India. It talks about PDS system also and uh, critically it talks about critically analyzing the statement so initially you can answer uh, start your answer by introducing uh, and giving the introduction about the PDS system like what is this PDS system is all about why was it introduced and uh, what kind of uh, you know framework is there in that because it is also talking about uh, uh, how the policy has actually worked so what is the uh, the efficiency of the PDS and actually so basically introduce your answer and then finally we will understand uh, we can write about a little uh, like uh, little about the framework like the central government's role here it it does the procurement etc through the FCI and then the state governments finally the procured food grain is sent to the state governments which actually state governments further allocates to the districts 
and uh, the role of state government is also there in the issuance of the ration cards identification of families etc so this is a little bit about the framework of the pds system how is it working in our country all right so finally we will uh, talk about why the system has been blamed for inefficiencies now we will write about some of the issues and how to address them now what kind of issues are there in this issues see there are issues relating to the identification of the beneficiary this is also called as exclusion ex uh, inclusion error by because there are various people who are actually above the poverty line people who get the fake ration cards and go to the uh, fair price shops and get their rations so here is a difficulty uh, we which is being faced regarding the identification of the beneficiaries it is also called as exclusion and inclusion error next issue regarding this is uh, relating to the leakage of the food grains while transportation while transportation and also uh, it is in relation to two things transportation and black marketing all right transportation and black marketing by actually the owner of the fair price shops who gets the uh, fake ration cards they collect it and then finally sells the products or the goods in the open market in that case all right so another issue we can write about is the open ended procurement why is this an issue open ended procurement because this means that all the incoming grains are accepted uh, and the buffer stock has been filled and filled and there is actually getting uh, actually the shortage of uh, the storage space has been faced by various organizations in fact the fiki also states uh, the food corporation of india states that there is a shortage of the uh, storage space there is shortage of the cold chain processing uh, you know systems or equipments so this is the issues with this the open ended procurement it actually leads to the storage space issue all right so the next one issue you can cite about is the un uh, the msp issue see by by introducing msp the farmers are actually uh, they are they actually got encouraged to divert their lands for from the production of the coarse grains which are actually being used by the poor people to rice and wheat which actually has discouraged crop crop diversification in that case all right so after telling the issues uh Uh, we can write it as from coarse grain production to the uh, cash crop such as rice and wheat so the other grains on which msp is being issued by the government all right so these were the some of the issues now how would we address them addressing of them should also be uh, written in the answer now how can we address the leakage issue first we talked about the leakage issue leakage issue can be sort out with the help of dbt which the government has actually started it has given the option to the state governments uh, like they can actually uh, give the benefits in uh, terms of cash or in terms of kind also and why uh, would this actually lead to the prevention of leakages because when cash is given to the people in their accounts the government thought that when cash should be given the people would actually get uh, the uh, freedom to use their uh, uh, to use their resources to increase their nutritional intake in their choices only and there is also uh, uh, you know curtailment of the marketing also when there is no storage of the food grains so there would be no leakage in transportation as well as it would also prevent the black marketing now the next point here <coughs> would be the technology based reforms in this case you can uh, use the examples of various state governments which has actually introduced various and very important kind of technological reforms which the central government also has cited time to time that other state also should <coughs> 
introduce such kind of reforms. Reforms such as Chhattisgarh and MP especially, they implemented various IT measures such as digitization of ration cards, digitization of ration card end to end computerization of the supply chain sms based uh, sorry gps based tracking of the delivery sms based uh, uh, you know monitoring by the citizens and gps tracking of delivery so and uh, these are some of the technological reform which various state governments has introduced you can also use such uh, examples in your answer and finally uh, one more thing talking about the nutritional level uh, bio fortified foods can be uh, distributed by the governments instead of normal rice and wheat because these kind of food would actually lead to better nutritional level in the population so there are various kind of examples you can uh, use one way of answering the answer is you tell them what the government has actually used uh, has actually been doing and what government can actually do for example in this case of leakage instead of dbt one better idea see loopholes are there in a, uh, there in any uh, kind of you know the measure you want to introduce for example in dbt also there are various kind of loopholes such as there are loopholes of distribution there is distribution challenge uh, because of the lack of the uh, account numbers and aadhaar linkage uh, you know uh, technologies which is which has to be used and one more thing that the cash can be used in various other uh, directions also instead of buying foods so one better uh, substitute for this would be food coupons like you give them food coupons and they can actually use these coupons to buy food only so here two things can be addressed first of all the uh, uh, the technological errors that can happen and second is the cash would be used for the food coupons only all right but there are also some kind of uh, you know problems can occur in this also but you can from your end you can actually suggest measures which you after you know the examiner would get an idea like if he or she becomes an officer how he would you know is planning to you know uh, address certain kind of issues Similarly, in technological reforms, also you can uh, use your ideas in biofortified food. So basically, the idea is that in telling the way forward, you can actually cite both the things: what the government has done and what you, as the administrator, would try to and would want to introduce. So this would reflect your own, you know, creativity and innovative ideas you have in your answer. So this is how you would answer your questions. Thank you.